Hi strangers, Daryl here. First and foremost, I hope you're all keeping okay and been enjoying the return of cinemas. Hurrah! Um, just filming this right now. Uh, we're currently in the workspace of Lighthouse in Wolverhampton. A massive shout out particularly to fellow independents who have slowly reopened in staggered fashion over the course of the summer. Um, it has been a hellish 12 to 18 months for us specifically, I think. Never mind the multiplexes in dealing with the culture recovery fund and whatnot and trying to feed money back into our respective organisations. Um, so thank goodness so many have returned, whether it's still with social distancing in place or whether you're slowly revving up to full capacity. It is wonderful to see up and down the country. Um, so hats off to you uh, for all the hard work and getting back to a place of considering yourselves viable, really. Um, it's I appreciate it's still a work in progress, but you'll get there, I am sure. So it's quite fitting today that I'm going to talk about a British independent offering that it sort of reinforces my the re-emergence or my sudden love again for horror. Um, because when I was growing up, uh, when my mum was here, bless her, she used to drag me to every horror going, um, and it was like the torture pawns or, you know, these rather redundant remakes that, you know, were slowly slowly being peddled out by Hollywood. And I just, the great majority, I just couldn't stand, really. Um, but in recent times, I felt like, I don't know whether the quality's just gone up or I've just been slowly um, been more exposed to more um, mentally challenging, emotionally challenging, fair. Um, like in recent times, offerings like The Witch and The Babadook and the uh, how thematically rich they are. And I think this film that I'm going to talk about very much fits that bill. It's such a great, um, challenging and propelling forward a film that, considering the time it's set in, where there was so much media hysteria and what cinema was um, putting out there in terms of quite graphic content, um, and in a modern era, we feel like we've become quite desensitised to a lot of it. So the fact that this film has still has the ability to shock in what it um, conveys is... Um, Quite a treat in, in itself. Um, quite a warped and surrealist treat, but it's a treat nonetheless. It's a film called Censor. It's directed by Prano Paley Bond. I hope I got that right, that first name. Apologies, Prano, if I've got it wrong. Uh, it stars Neam Algar, uh, who was in uh, Calm With Horses last year. Um, I just caught it at the tail end of Glasgow Film Festival, right before COVID kicked in. Um, so I was very fortunate to catch it. And uh, I believe it's still on Netflix. It's well worth seeking out. It stars Barry Cohen and Cosmo Jarvis. It's a terrific Irish set thriller um, and a film that Sally went under the radar because of, you know, the current circumstances at that time. So do seek that out. But to get stuck into censor, Niamh Algar's character, she is, she propels us into the world of uh film classification and in the 1980s so we're talking Thatcherite rule a lot of media hysteria um quite inevitably quite conservative in many people's thinking and what should be put out there in terms of content um and of course section 28 was running rampant for queer people and so you can imagine what it would be like in a cinematic context in terms of what was being um clipped shall we say um, but there was this wealth of VHS nasties that were doing the rounds at that time um, that dealt with issues um, that were quite violent and quite graphic in nature. And she is in charge of, you know, making sure that these VHS nasties are as sanitised as possible. But she's working in a male-dominated world, so you can imagine, and it's very much represented in the long corridors on the long tables that she chairs meetings at. She's sort of at the tail end, and then you've got the big boss at the end, and the framing sort of deems it as if there is this power um, struggle that's going on. But in Neam Algar's case, she has horrors of the past that inevitably tap into these VHS nesties that she's consuming on a daily basis. 
Um, there is a particular one that triggers her in the form of a sister, which I won't go into detail on what it entails, but it sets her on a path that is a far cry from the quite sanitised world that she lives in. It's quite grey and murky um, in terms of the interiors, but underneath all of this in the early going, there is something sinister lurking and slowly eking um, or boiling to the surface uh, within the film. Now, since uh, I was knocked out aesthetically, I think the era that it captures, particularly in the reimagining or, you know, its own establishing of video VHS Nasties, now it captures it with the aesthetic with the deep reds um, and the dark blues and the desolate houses and deep into the woods. It's got all those classic tropes for you to find that it represents that era and this particular brand of filmmaking so authentically and the attention to detail is stellar um and it's just further proof that i think pretty particularly words, right uh, british horror in recent times it, it's at the top of its game at the moment and i think visually con considering it's a debut as well it's so striking and surrealist particularly as it progresses like the third act is Brief. Um, it does take quite the turn, and it, I think it will be divisive inevitably in where it goes. But I think Sensor is a great representation of the horrors that we all encounter in life, whether it's grief, um, bullying, violence, you name it. Um, we live in those horrors, but we wish we could edit them out instead of, you know, or in some cases, people sort of embrace. Unfortunately, the evil that's been sort of imposed upon them and they run with it. It's like hurt people, hurt people, that sort of phrase or term. Um, and Neon Algar's performance conveys it so wonderfully. I think there's such a vulnerability in the early going and it, she's quite considered and calm. Um, again, bringing it back to the desensitised nature, she just sort of consumes it so like it's nothing. And then course the one the just nasty that she does consume it just sets her off and there is wonderful support from michael smiley who just does sinister very very well let's face it um uh, you only have to look at ben wheatley's kill list um that he was in not too long ago um he plays this very slime ball producer who is very misogynistic towards women he sort of treats them like they're meat. Um, and for him, this way of filmmaking, he sort of deems it there's sort of some smarts and there's some real intelligence behind it. But through him, it doesn't really feel that way. Um, so he's quite the counterpoint to what Neam Algar is having to deal with and trying to, you know, clip things or splice things as, you know, as clinical as possible. Um Sensor, I, it's a genuine favourite of mine for 2021. I think, again, on a personal level, it's a great reinforcement of why I love horror at the moment. It's probably one of my favourite genres in terms of how it deals with specific themes so effectively. Visually, it's an incredible debut. Um, and I wanted to uh, just tip off, actually, um, a guy called Philip Brown, who worked for a company called Tidybox, I believe, and he reached out on Twitter, actually, uh, a couple of days ago after seeing the film, and he was heavily involved in the production design. I think it was the same uh, production designer that worked on St. Maud, uh, which was another um, brilliant horror that I appreciated last year, uh, which was led by Morphe Clark. Um, and he had a lot of say in the production design and the corridors and he was on a very tight budget. Um, he was saying, so hats off to you um, because I appreciate a lot of the behind the scenes guys don't get enough credit, uh, particularly in the current climate. And you really should be because to keep things going, especially in a time like this in COVID, um, I can't imagine what you're all having to deal with just to get films made 
uh, and keep production ticking over. Um, so hats off to you. And obviously do the director Prana Bailey Bond. He's such a brilliant debut. And I'm so, it's just so wonderful to see, um, especially in the horror genre, female directors, because, you know, we have all these wonderful screen creeds down the years, but it's been so densely populated by male directors. Um, so to see again, like with, I mentioned the Babadook earlier, Jennifer Kent's, um, and now with Prano, and there's many others I could list off. Um, female filmmakers are really ruling the roost uh, in terms of horror, and it is just terrific to see. So do seek out Sensor. Um, it is quite the trip, but it is well worth the journey. Um, so make sure you check it out on Friday, the 20th of August. Now, that is a wrap for now. Um, other films that I'll be covering soon, Edinburgh Film Festival is next week. The Pressing Industry Schedule has been released. So I will be doing the odd video, um, predominantly written offerings uh, in the coming weeks. And that will be through Movie Marker. So www.moviemarker.co.uk. And of course, you can follow us on Twitter uh, at Movie Marker. Um, but that is a wrap for now. I hope you've enjoyed this review. I appreciate it. it's been a while. I hope I haven't rambled too much. And I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, but for now, I've been Dara Uh Take care. And the time we're putting set, enjoy your weekend and bye bye for now. Much love.